Hi, Dr. Chanzavati here. Sorry that we started a little late. It's about uh, close to noon. And as promised, we're gonna talk about lips. It's all about the lips today. And uh, we have a couple questions from uh, some interested parties out there. So I'm gonna go over some questions. Before we start, I wanted to just go over um, all our social media platforms. You can follow us, multiple locations. We've got a YouTube channel up now. And um, so our YouTube channel is Faces by DRT1, or also Chanzavati Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery. I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then um, Periscope. Uh, right now it's at Christina Tanzavati, my full name. I know that's a hard one to spell. So actually, uh, we are in the process of changing it. It's going to be at Faces by DRT. So uh, that's going to be consistent all the way through. So Faces by Dr. T. Facebook is uh, Faces by Dr. T. Uh, Instagram the same. And our website, FacesbyDrT.com. Okay, so uh, lip augmentation. Um, what is lip augmentation? Um, so the craze right now is Kylie Jenner's lips. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, information out there about lip augmentation, but what is lip augmentation? Well, it's a procedure either can be done surgically or non-surgically, either through fillers or other means of clumping up the lips. Um, so giving the lips volume. That's what augmentation means, is just adding to the lips as they currently are. What can we do with um, the procedures that are available with fillers or with surgery that we can achieve with the lips? I think the most common things that I see as people come in uh, to get their lips filled is that they've got either thin lips, small lips, and that they're not pretty wide, so it doesn't fit their face, or they love the way their lips look, they just want it fuller. Um, I also have patients on my, uh, in my a more aging population where the lips as they get as you get older they start to thin and we lose this border this very nice lip roll that everybody has it's called the uh, vermilion border and that's the medical term but if you feel on your own lip take a feel right now and you can take a feel on just at the border of, the, of your lip you feel a nice roll that roll starts to get lost as we get older. So that's a typical area that I will fill with fillers. Um, so what's the best method for lip enhancement or plumping? For the just purposes of getting volume, there's two ways. One is surgery and the other one's non-surgery. So with non-surgical means, there's many lip fillers out there. The two I like the best for the lips for plumping purposes, Juvederm, uh, it's a hyaluronic acid filler, uh, and also Restylane Lift, that's also hyaluronic acid filler. Both are thicker materials, they cause uh, an increase in volume in the lips, and they're very natural looking. Uh, Juvederm has a consistency of uh, creating some, um, it's hydrophilic, meaning it attracts water. So it's a great filler in that you immediately get the volume you're looking for with just a little bit of the filler can give you a good volume already. Um, so the best method I would say in my hands is actually, and most naturally, is with fillers. Can you do that with surgery? Yes, you can. However, there's some downtime with, fill, with uh, surgery. And the ways that we do that with surgery is either through silicone implants, and those silicone implants can be sized to the particular size of your lips, as well as how much volume you want. The other thing that we uh, can use is Gore-Tex grafts um, and uh, fat grafting. Fat grafting is a little bit more appealing to most of my patients because it's using some of their own material, so uh, fat is very appealing. And then uh, people like to also take it from their belly or any other areas that they want to get the fat loss so that's a good um, that's a good procedure so what fillers would you use I think I've asked answered that already uh, Juvederm and wrestling lift are great for plumping now if we're talking about fine-tuning as we're getting older and that border that I was talking about earlier that nice border the light nice lip roll that you just get right at that corner 
it makes that feminine appearance of our lips. Well, the filler that I like to use for that is Rustling Silk. And the reason why is because it's a little softer material and it won't give you a duck-like lip. I know you've seen them out there. People have seen them out there. If that is what you're seeing, it's because they've gotten the wrong filler for the purposes of their lips. So to get just that fine roll, it's actually, we would want to use something softer, like Restylane Silk. Another op option on the market is Bellatero. That's another soft filler that we can use. Um, what's the aftercare for fillers um, in the lips? So the aftercare for fillers would be to ice the day of, off and on. You don't want to ice too long, of course, because you might not feel it, depending on if you had numbing cream for the procedure. So that's another thing. So when I do lip fillers, there's two ways to numb the lips. The lips are very sensitive. Uh, so one of the things I like to do is numbing cream for about 15, 20 minutes. That gets it very, fairly numb. Uh, most people can't feel the needle pokes. Uh, they might feel the needle as it's tracking in the lips. So the other option I have is doing a lip block. So if you ever got to the dentist and got your uh, teeth worked on, you know what lip block feels like. You can't really feel any of your mouth. You feel like a chipmunk afterwards. Well, that's what a lip block is. Um, a lip block will last you about one to two hours. And so that sometimes it's hard for people who want to go right to go outside and um, uh, go and have dinner with, or, or lunch with a, you know, their friends. And it can be a little weird after that. Um, how swollen can you get from fillers? So uh, depends on the product. But typically, with all the products, there is some swelling for about two to three days. And that's just to go like as if, if you've ever sprained your ankle, you get some swelling, and it gets worse maybe the first or second day afterwards, and then it comes down. So the icing is very important. So I would um, make sure some places give you ice packs, uh, but have some ice packs at home ready for after the procedure. So that's one thing to go get. If you're planning to get your lips filled, Prepare, go get some ice packs or something that you can ice your lips with afterwards. Um, it's also good to sleep with your head elevated uh, that first night. It can help with the gravity to get the swelling down. Um, and then you can apply makeup the following day. So I know those people who are concerned about putting anything on, you can help hide everything if you do have some bruising, uh, lip liner and your lipstick, okay? Should you massage your lips after fillers? No, 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 no. Don't massage your lips because the fillers can clump and cause some bumps in your lips. It's hard because we're moving our lips all the time, we're smiling, we're talking, and that can also cause the, the fillers to move, but massaging them is the worst thing you can do. You don't want to move the filler where they've been placed, and that can happen, and then you're gonna get a bleb, it can show up on the inside of the lip or show up on the outside, and when that happens, then we have to do something to try to dissolve it. And dissolving the filler with the hyaluronidase is an uh, enzyme that we can dissolve it with, can be, it, it's not exact. So if we start using that to dissolve that one bleb, it can dissolve the rest of the filler in your lip too. So we don't want to go down that route if we don't need to. Now, can it still happen? Can you still have bumps on your lips after fillers? It can still happen. Usually, in my case, if I do get bumps, they're very superficial, they're at the surface, and we can take care of it with some, a little bit of an enzyme. Most of the time, though, those bumps go away on their own, and there's nothing that we need to do about them. So they're just temporary. Um, what uh, is better, Restylin or Juvederm? Uh, I will not say one way or the other. I use both interchangeably. I like all the fillers. Um, I will say I do use more Juvederm than Restylin. For the purposes of Restylane, I use Restylane if there are other areas they want treated, like around the eyes. Now, I, I have special, uh, uh, that's a, a special area for me that I like to do, the hollowing under the eyes, and for that area, I only use Restylane. Um, that is the one that works the best in that area, and so if they do want to do some in their lips too, then that's the product I will use. <clears throat> Which lasts longer? Um, you know, they all vary. They have a, a, a wide range. So Restylane lasts about six months is what the manufacturer says. Uh, but there's all, 
all varieties. So patience can last longer or shorter, just depends on how fast the material gets dissolved and eaten up. Um, Juvederm, we say it lasts from six to 12 months. For the majority of my patients, it lasts about nine months. I have patients who last a year and some patients less. So we can't guarantee exactly how long it's gonna last. It really depends on how your body processes the material, but we can just give you a generalization of how most people will deal with a product. Uh, can your can Botox um, can you Botox lips to get a plumper lip? Okay, so that's an interesting question. Now, Botox we use to paralyze muscles. The muscles around our lips will cause lip lines. The lip lines that we see, they can cause um, the, uh, the the lips to droop down. So we got a flatter lip. So yes. Uh, Botox can help with lip lines, but it's not necessarily going to plump up your lips, and that's not the purpose of Botox. So uh, remember that fillers fill, so they plump up the lips. Botox paralyzes muscles, so they're not about to uh, create any increased volume in your lips. <clears throat> What's the best option for a permanent lip augmentation? Okay, so for our best, the best option I would say for a permanent lip augmentation is to use an implant. Yeah. Now there's a variety of implants out there. The one I like to use the best is a silicone augmentation. You know, that works well for breast augmentation and it's same, the same thing applies for the lips. It's a very mobile part of your lips. Uh, there, are other, uh, there are other permanent implants out there, but they have a higher record of infection. Not to say that silicone implants don't have uh, an infection rate, or but they're really low compared to Gore-Tex and Alloderm. And Alloderm is another one that I would say has a low infection rate and is a very viable uh, option as well. But I've had to take uh, Gore-Tex implants out. I've had to take some other implants out, especially liquid silicone. Liquid silicone injectables, those will clump. So, if anybody is out there, that is uh, a no-no, liquid silicone. Um, it is not FDA approved in this country and I would not highly recommend against liquid silicone injections. Okay, what about fat transfer for your lips? Fat transfer, I will tell you, is not permanent. It can give you probably a, a good three to five years depending on how fast you process the fat. The lips are a mobile area, so anywhere where you know you've got motion, that will speed up the um, the the processing of that fat or whatever material you put in, unless it's a, a permanent uh, type of implant. So fat works, and it actually is a very natural uh, prop, a natural augmentation. I really like fat. I like it for actually the whole face. There's so many areas that I fill with fat, so it's a very soft. Uh, filler to use and it's your own material. So what can you go what what can be better than using your own material? That's safe uh, The problem with fat is that uh, You have we have to over inject because uh, a lot of the fat goes away So only about 20 to 30 percent of it stays so for, for a period of time your lips are going to look Really big and we have to over inject over that so they may look larger than you want them to so there's that period for two to three weeks where you have to be happy with that. And then as the swelling goes down, it will come back to where you're happy with. So I often have patients who will say, oh, it's too big, and then later tell me actually they want more now. So uh, that's typical also of fillers. People always want more. You put one syringe and then uh, they think it's too big and they'll come back and they say, actually I want some more to my lips. So what's the aftercare for fat transfer? or permanent lip augmentation implants. So after, uh, I will say with after uh, permanent lip augmentation, there are some uh, exercises that I have to have you do because what happens around the implants is it can develop a capsule which causes some contracture of the lips. And without motion or exercise around them, you're gonna cause it to contract and not be in, a, in a, the perfect perfect spot. So there are things like where I have you smile, where I have you purse your lips, um, uh, different motions and exercises to prevent that from happening. 
and that we have you start about two to three weeks after the procedure and increase in how often you're doing those, um, those exercises up to about six weeks. For fat transfer, there really isn't any uh, aftercare except for making sure that it, um, so you're gonna use some cool compresses to decrease the swelling, to speed up the swelling. But there's no, I wouldn't want you to ice the lips. Uh, I think that ice can cause more of the fat to go away. So that's opposite of what we would do for fillers. How do you get natural looking lips? Well, I think that is injector based and you really need to do your homework, really need to find out who is doing the injection. You want somebody who's experienced, who's only doing injections in the face um, and the neck, and their main focus is the face. Uh, because I will tell you that you can inject um, many areas, but if that's not your specialty, you're not studying lips every day, then you're not gonna understand exactly where to put the filler. And one of the things that I like to do for some of my patients is to give them the nice Cupid's bow, which is difficult to explain to patients, but it's just an aesthetic eye that you need to have to understand what is a beautiful lip, what what happens as we get older, what do I need to, uh, where do I need to inject to give the best result? So the natural looking lip is gonna come from an experienced injector, not the filler material itself. So don't go by what the filler is, really go by what the experience of the injector uh, and, and the, the experience they have. Uh, how do you get turned up lips? Okay, this is an interesting question too. Without, the, without properly describing the anatomy, I will say that the, the, the appropriate place of the filler will determine how the lips turn up. If you're just putting along the border, you will do a slight turn up but then there has to be another injection just beneath the border, and that really creates that upturn of the lip. If we go too far in the lip itself, that's really for volume, and that's really for anterior projection of the lip. So from the side view, if you put that there, it creates that fuller lip that goes forward. Um, how do you avoid the duck lip look? Okay, that's a filler issue too, as well, as well as how thin are the patient's lips to begin with? If you have a very thin lip, you want to even out the filler so that it's not just in the border. If they've got a nice border, you're not gonna put any in the border. You're gonna put it in the, uh, in the deep and in the lip itself. I will also inject in the uh, upper lip as well, not in the lip, red lip of, it, of the lip, but above as well to get more volume. And, and that will sometimes also give you the turned lip as well as avoiding the duck lip because if you put all this volume here and they've got no volume or lack of volume in the upper the skin portion of the lip, then it does create so much of a volume that it does create that duck lip. So it's all about proportion and symmetry. So that's what I want to take, uh, I want you guys to uh, here and take away from this. It's experience, it's doing a lot of injections, and really knowing the anatomy and the proper uh, beauty of uh, a natural looking lip. All right. Thanks. Tune in next week. Next Tuesday, we will have another Periscope edition, and uh, we have our topic. We'll do a preview uh, this Thursday so you know what the topic is next week. So come ready for questions. And are there any questions out there? No?